Can you talk about your partnerships in Brazil? Sure can. We have uh, four fantastic partners, São Martinho, uh, Cosan, Guarani, and Bungi, uh, four, uh, uh, the only four public companies in the sugarcane sector. They represent 20% of the Brazilian sector. And they're, the, they're the leaders in aggregating or trying to consolidate the Brazilian sector. So Martin, we see as the technical innovator, the most efficient operator in the world, and, and owning, owning the biggest mill in the world. What about the bolt-on facilities? The bolt-on facility was a very interesting concept. There was the whole notion of, if you think about a greenfield, you think about what it takes to build a big plan, two-thirds of the capital is in the agriculture and the processing of the agriculture. We focus on fermentation. So the whole idea is to leverage that two-thirds. That isn't what we're good at. Let somebody else do it and then bolt on a facility that actually has a pipe feeding sugar cane syrup from the agriculture facility right to our plant. So it's a lot less expensive, 100 million versus three, five, or a billion, depending on the size of the, of the master facility. And our partners are sharing with us the capex to make that plant. Who's financing these? Uh, today, it's really in partnership between us and our partners. Uh, we are exploring financing for the plants as we continue to grow aggressively. And uh, BNDS, the National uh, Development Bank, has had discussions with us about how they can participate in the financing of some of these plants. What about your partnership with Total? Uh, the partnership with Total is exciting. They are the fifth largest uh, publicly held oil company in the world. They are very progressive. The reason why we like them a lot is they're very committed to biomass and they're very clear about what their focus is in renewables. It's really about a couple of segments that they want to be leaders in. Mm -hmm. And we like the idea of a company who's focused, committed, and clear, and not just about doing an advertising campaign by committing to something in renewables. Um, can you talk about your business model, the validation strategy? Sure. I mean, th there's two parts to that, right? The business model has been all about accessing lowest cost, largest scale feedstock. That's all about Brazil and really locking in the, the access to the, to the supply of cane that we have. On the front end, on the customer side, it's really been about a concept I like to call long demand, meaning we have more demand that we can actually scale up production to meet for the foreseeable future. And the whole model is about optimizing. And the way we optimize or prioritize is actually with partners that enable us to access the market fast. So if I think about some of the partners who have uh, tested farnesine, included farnesine in their production process, and have come back and said, yes, we'll take it, and please make and give us or sell us as much as you can. That's what we're looking for, and that's what I mean by accelerating downstream and validation, because that's really the barrier in non-regulatory environments, is assuring that our molecule is as good or better than what we're replacing, and that it doesn't cost our customer to start using in their process. So you're working with the regu current regulations and manufacturers? We, we're really, exactly, we're really looking or working with current manufacturers who are making end consumer products. So the maker of PET that goes into plastic bottles, uh, the maker of the end cosmetic, a company like L'Oreal, or Procter & Gamble for uh, the basic detergents. So it's the maker of those consumer goods that we're actually working with, so they validate, accept, and then can take our product directly into their, their, their whole manufacturing process. What they want is really simple. They want to give their customers high performance, green, mm -hmm. at the same price as petroleum, and get themselves away from this huge volatility in oil prices, and do it in a way that's actually sustainable, which is exactly what we're providing them. What are the upcoming milestones that we can expect? We have, we have some significant milestones that we expect uh, almost on a quarterly basis to, uh, to update the market. And I will give you milestones in two ways. First of all, the guidance we're going to give, which is really about our production cost, our production volume, and our av average selling price. That way you have a sense of what's our volume look like and how can you forecast or at least have some indication about the future of our business. Then regarding core milestones, it's really about commercialization and our, our plants. We have a, uh, we have a, a the groundbreaking of our first industrial plant coming up in the first half of December. Uh, we have our first commercial production coming out of contract manufacturing uh, in the uh, first half of 2011. We have our first sales happening to end customers also in the first half of 2011. And we have a few new vertical markets that we'll be announcing over the next 90 days or so to really uh, underpin uh, beyond our current view about what we can achieve over the next four years, some growth underneath that based on new markets that we're accessing. Where do you see yourself in five to ten years? Five to ten years. Uh, 
I believe that we're very capable of five to 10 years from now being uh, a 15 to $20 billion market cap company and significantly uh, accessing or being disruptive in some of the core markets where we are competitively advantaged. Structural cost advantage, better product, and green. Okay. Thank you, John, for telling us about Amris, and best of luck. Thank you. I really appreciate the time and the opportunity to share our story with you. From the NASDAQ market site, I'm Boonzi Dickinson. Keep watching BioBiz TV.